So in this clip I want to go through and cover how to set up a duotone image for InDesign. Uh, we're going to start out, I've got a logo here. It's actually my logo and we're going to pull it up. It's a Photoshop file. It's a pixel based image. We're going to pull it up in Photoshop. So uh, something I need to mention about the duotone is that it is technically considered a spot color. Uh, there's a few things we need to do to prep to set this up. but uh, one thing I need to mention is that it is a simulation of something that happens on press. So this is different than all the other spot color graphics we've set up uh, just because it's a duotone and it allows us to mix black, typically black and a spot color. So most of the time you're not going to do two spot colors. Usually we do uh, reserve one color as black in a duotone. When you open a pixel based image in Photoshop, first thing you need to remember about making a duotone is that it needs to be grayscale. So right now we've got this logo, I'm going to zoom in a little bit, and it's set up as index color. So we need to go check that image, the image drop down menu, and mode, and we want to switch it from index color to grayscale. Uh, something to check is you always want to make sure it's 8 bit. If it's 16-bit, you're going to have trouble making it a duotone. Okay. It'll ask us, do we want to discard the color information? We want to click OK, and it's gone. So you got to be careful that you don't save over that at that point, too. Some other things that it's best to do is to flatten your layers. So if you go to the Layer drop-down menu and click Flatten Your Image, that's always a good idea. And sometimes when you convert it from color, you may want to come in and adjust it. You want to look for good highlights, midtones, and of course your shadows. So I'm looking for those three variations. So if you needed to, you could come in and adjust that. We're going to back off it a little bit so we get a, a midtone gray. Okay, and and it's always good to adjust that before you get in and make it a duotone. You can come back and sample what percentage that 71% gray there. It might be a little bit dark still, but we're going to continue anyway. So once you have that set up, you need to come back to image and mode. And it's always a good idea to check your resolution. So if you go to image and image size, you would want to make sure that it's 300 dpi. Okay, keeping in mind that you want to uncheck resample image, unless you want to make it smaller. So if you have the resample up, that's actually making up information, can add information into it. So I want to check that and change it to 300 dpi. Now that that's set, we just need to go to image, mode, and change it to duotone. And typically it's going to come up as a monotone. Black is almost always set at the first color. Don't recommend that you do two spot colors for a duotone. That usually doesn't work out very well. And it's hard to reproduce what this is going to look like on an inkjet or a laser jet printer. This is typically, for best results, you're going to see them on the press. It's hard to replicate this process. So once I have the duotone dialog box up, I want to change this from monotone to duotone. And then we can add a second color. Uh, we're going to pick the, usually the default one we stick with the Pantone solid coated. And I like to use the Pantone the a number and the letter C. So some of these orange, warm red, kind of stay away from those. Those can get you into trouble, uh, especially the hexachromes. Uh, I'm going to type in a number, type in 1815, and see if we get a red. Uh, so it's kind of a wine red. There it is. And I'm going to click OK. So there's the color. Now that you have those colors, we can actually mix them with the channel. So if we want to take some of the red, that's out of the high, that's out of the shadows. So typically your 100 dialog box represents the shadows. Over here is the midtones and the 50 dialog box. If you get the wrong one, you can just drag it off and it will disappear. And most of the time we're not adjusting 60 or 40. We stick right in the midtones. So the 50, the 0. Okay. If we turn that up, that's working with the highlights. See how it's adding the the red color into the background. So some unique effects you can accomplish using the duotones. Okay. And now if we like that but we still think it's a little bit dark, it's got too much black, then we can come back to the black slider and 
take out some of the black. Oops, we want the mid-tone. So we can mess with the 50% there. Okay, and if we wanted to add here, we can make that a gray background. So that's the zero is the highlight, 50 is the mid-tone, and the 100 section, the end, is the shadow. So, and that's your basic duotone. Once you click OK, you've got it set. The last part is saving it. So if you go to Save As, typically the best format to use is Photoshop EPS. So we're going to pick Photoshop EPS. That is very much different than an Illustrator EPS file in that the only reason we use typically use a Photoshop EPS is for a duotone. So one of the main reasons we still use it, it's kind of a legacy and old format we've had in the past that's still around. So once you save that, and then this box, the second box, just leave that as is and click OK. Okay, that should be set. That is your duotone. That's how you set up a duotone.